In the hematology session, I will be taking and talking about the RBC and its disorders, the WBC and its disorders. So in this video, I will talk about the RBC series, about the reticulocyte, RBC indices and about the peripheral smear findings. So now coming on to the topic proper. So the RBC, the size of the RBC is 7 to 8 microns. Now what is the lifespan of RBC? So the lifespan of RBC is about 120 days and the shape of the RBC, RBC is biconcave. So the most important protein to maintain the shape of the RBC it is spectrin. So spectrin is the most important protein to maintain the shape of RBCs. So when you are looking on a microscope, you can find the central one third of the RBC will be pallor, having pallor. So now talking about the RBC series, from where the RBC is originating. We have the hematopoietic stem cells, then comes the common myeloid progenitor, then comes the early normoblast, becomes the intermediate normoblast, late normoblast, reticulocyte and finally the RBC. There is a small correction, here there is proerythroblast, that is before early normoblast. So, when you go down from the proerythroblast to the reticulocyte, you can see that the cell size is getting reduced as well as the nuclear size is also getting reduced. And when you reach this reticulocyte, when you reach the reticulocyte, there will be no nucleus. The early normoblast, it is also called as the basophilic basophilic normoblast. The intermediate normoblast is also called polychromatic normoblast. Whereas the late normoblast is also called orthochromic normoblast. It is because of the color which they produce. That means if a basophilic normoblast, basophilic means slightly bluish in color, whereas polychromatic means there will be a mixture of bluish and pinkish color, whereas in the orthochromatic, it means that there is a pale whitish yellowish color. It actually take 1 to 2 days for the reticulocyte to form the RBC. So when is the hemoglobin production is starting? So it is starting at the proerythroblast stage. And it first appears in the intermediate normoblast stage. So this is the stage, the proerythroblast, where the hemoglobin production starts. But the hemoglobin first appears in when you are looking, you can you can see on the intermediate normoblast stage. So now talking about the reticulocyte, they are the immediate precursor of the RBC. They are non-nucleated, and the normal reticulocyte count is 0.5 to 1.5 percentage. That means in a peripheral smear, if you are taking 100 RBC, among that, if the reticulocyte count is 1 percentage, among that 1 will be the reticulocyte. And when you are staining using a Romanowski stain, the reticulocyte, uh, when you are staining on a Romanowski stain, the reticulocyte will appear as polychromatia polychromasia so this is a peripheral smear where you can see the RBCs and this is a reticulocyte 
which is in the form of polychromatic that is a pinkish as well as a bluish but this is not a good way to count the retic count for that we have special stains so what are the special stain for the retic count it is the supra vital stain for example we have the new methylene blue new methylene blue and the brilliant chrysal blue so these are the two examples of uh, two example of the supra vital stain so vital means living so it is actually staining a living cells in vitro so to make a peripheral smear take a glass slide put a drop of blood make the peripheral smear you can add the erotic stain and you can incubate for uh, at least for 30 minutes then visualize so when you are taking the retic stain so this is a peripheral smear and on retic stain these are the rbcs and here you can see the reticulocyte so they are called reticulocyte because of the reticular meshwork of rnas found so now we can look what are the factors that is increasing the retic count and what are the factors that is decreasing the retic count so the increased count it is seen in acute blood loss then conditions of hemolytic anemia and most importantly response to therapy that is when we are giving medicine if there is a response the retic count will be increased especially in iron deficiency anemia vitamin b12 deficiency anemia fol folic acid deficiency anemia so when a person is having these types of anemia we will give medicine so as a response if there is a response there will be increased retic count a decrease in retic count is seen in when the bone marrow suppression when bone marrow is getting sub pressed so it can be also due to aplastic anemia or any causes that causes the bone marrow suppression such as certain cytotoxic drugs radiations so the, this can all decrease the retic count increase in the cell count can be called as cytosis and decrease in the cell count can be called as penia cytopenia in this i would like to discuss about an important formula that is a corrected retic count so what is a corrected retic count it is a reticulocyte percentage into the patient's hemoglobin or the hematocrit divided by the normal hemoglobin or the hematocrit for that age so this is a corrected retic count so this is the corrected retic count next what is the reticulocyte production index so the reticulocyte production index is the retic percentage divided by the maturation time so this is a reticulocyte production index so the maturation time it is a 1 to 2 days that is a reticulocyte the time taken by the reticulocyte to become the mature rbc but actually this maturation time it depends upon the pcv packed cell volume so if the pcv is 
ഫോർട്ടി പെർസെൻറ്റേജ് ദെൻ ദ മെച്ചുറേഷൻ ടൈം ഈസ് വൺ ഡേ വെൻ ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് തേർട്ടി ടു ഫോർട്ടി പെർസെൻറ്റേജ് ദെൻ ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് വൺ പോയിൻറ്റ് ഫൈവ് ഡേ വെൻ ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് ട്വൻറ്റി ടു തേർട്ടി പെർസെൻറ്റേജ് ദ മെച്ചുറേഷൻ ടൈം ഈസ് ടു ഡേ ആൻഡ് വെൻ ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് ലെസ് ദാൻ ട്വൻറ്റി പെർസെൻറ്റേജ് ദ മെച്ചുറേഷൻ ടൈം ഈസ് ടു പോയിൻറ്റ് ഫൈവ് ഡേ ഫ്രം ദ ഗിവൻ പാക്കറ്റ് സെൽ വോളിയം വി ക്യാൻ കാൽക്കുലേറ്റ് ദി മെച്ചുറേഷൻ ടൈം ആൻഡ് ദ റെറ്റിക് പെർസെൻറ്റേജ് വിൽ ബി ഗിവൺ വി ക്യാൻ കൗ കാൽക്കുലേറ്റ് ദ റെറ്റിക്കുലോസൈറ്റ് പ്രൊഡക്ഷൻ ഇൻഡെക്സ് സോ ദി ലാസ്റ്റ് ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻറ്റ് ഫോർമുല ഓൺ ദി റെറ്റിക്കുലോസൈറ്റ് ഈസ് ആബ്സല്യൂട്ട് റെറ്റിക്കുലോസൈറ്റ് കൗണ്ട് സോ ദി ആബ്സല്യൂട്ട് റെറ്റിക്കുലോസൈറ്റ് കൗണ്ട് ഈസ് ദ റെറ്റിക്കുലോസൈറ്റ് പെർസെൻറ്റേജ് ഇൻ ടു ആർ ബി സി കൗണ്ട് സോ ദിസ് ഇസ് ആബ്സല്യൂട്ട് റെറ്റിക്കുലോസൈറ്റ് കൗണ്ട് സോ നൗ കമ്മിങ് ഓൺ ടു ദ ആർ ബി സി ഇൻഡിസസ് വി ഹാവ് ദി എം സി വി ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് എ മെയിൻ കോർപസ്കുലാർ വോളിയം സോ ദിസ് ഈസ് ആക്ച്വലി ദി ആവറേജ് വോളിയം ഓഫ് ആർ ബി സി ആൻഡ് ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് ഈക്വൽ ടു ദി പി സി വി പാക്ക്ഡ് സെൽ വോളിയം ഡിവൈഡഡ് ബൈ ആർ ബി സി കൗണ്ട് സോ വാട്ട് ഈസ് എ നോർമൽ എം സി വി മീൻ കോർപസ്കുലാർ വോളിയം ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് എയ്റ്റി ടു ടു നയൻറ്റി സിക്സ് ഫെംടോ ലിറ്റർ ആക്ച്വലി ദീസ് ആർ ബി സി ഇൻഡിസസ് ഹാവ് ഗോട്ട് സിഗ്നിഫിക്കൻസ് സോ ദ സിഗ്നിഫിക്കൻസ് ഈസ് ദാറ്റ് സോ എക്കോർഡിംഗ് ടു ദ എം സി വി എക്കോർഡിംഗ് ടു മെയിൻ കോർപസ്കുലർ വോളിയം വി ക്യാൻ ക്ലാസിഫൈ അനീമിയ ഇൻ ടു മൈക്രോസൈറ്റിക് നോർമോസൈറ്റിക് ആസ് വെൽ ആസ് മാക്രോസൈറ്റിക് സോ വെൻ ദി എം സി വി ഈസ് ലെസ് ദാൻ എയ്റ്റി ഫെംടോ ലീറ്റർ വി ക്യാൻ കോൾ ഇറ്റ് ആസ് മൈക്രോസൈറ്റിക് ആൻഡ് വെൻ ദ എം സി വി ഈസ് ഗ്രേറ്റർ ദാൻ ഹൺഡ്രഡ് ഫെംടോ ലീറ്റർ വി ക്യാൻ കോൾ ഇറ്റ് ആസ് മാക്രോസൈറ്റിക് അനീമിയ ആൻഡ് ഇഫ് ദർ ഇസ് അനീമിയ ആൻഡ് ദ എം സി വി ഈസ് എയ്റ്റി ടു ഹൺഡ്രഡ് ഫെംടോ ലീറ്റേഴ്സ് ഇറ്റ് ക്യാൻ ബി കോൾ ആസ് നോർമോസൈറ്റിക് അനീമിയ സോ ടു റിമെമ്പർ ദി മൈക്രോസൈറ്റിക് അനീമിയ യു ക്യാൻ യൂസ് ദ നിമോണിക് സീത സോ എസ് സ്റ്റാൻഡ് ഫോർ ദ സിഡ്രോബ്ലാസ്റ്റിക് അനീമിയ ഓർ ഡ്യൂ ടു ലെഡ് പോയിസണിങ് ലെഡ് പോയിസണിങ് ഐ സ്റ്റാൻഡ് ഫോർ ഐറൺ ഡെഫിഷ്യൻസി അനീമിയ T stands for thalassemia and A stands for anemia of chronic disease chronic disease the macrocytic you can remember as LHMC that is a ladies hostel medical college that is L stands for liver disease h stands for hypothyroidism m stands for megaloblastic anemia megaloblastic anemia either due to folic acid deficiency or b12 deficiency then c for due to cytotoxic drugs most of the others are included in the normocytic anemia which includes aplastic anemia and anemia due to chronic renal failure anemia even anemia of chronic disease chronic disease the hemolytic anemia so these are all comes under the normocytic anemia so next rbc indices is the mch that is mean corpuscular hemoglobin it means that the average hemoglobin in a single rbc and so it is equal to hemoglobin divided by 
RBC count. The normal MCH is 27 to 32 picogram. So according to MCH, we can divide into normochromic and hypochromic. So when the MCH is in the range of 27 to 32 picogram, it is normochromic and when it is less than 27 picogram, picogram it is hypochromic. That means the hemoglobin content in a single RBC is less. So the next RBC indices is MCHC that is the mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration. This means that the hemoglobin in a given volume of packed red cells in a given volume of packed red cells. So the MCHC is equal to the MCH divided by MCV mean corpuscular volume and the normal MCHC is 33 to 37 gram per deciliter. So this MCHC it is increased in hereditary spherocytosis hereditary spherocytosis and why it is increased actually in hereditary spherocytosis there is water loss so the hemoglobin gets concentrated whereas it is normal in the megaloblastic anemia it is normal because the increase in the volume is proportionate to the increase in the hemoglobin concentration so the next concept is the, uh, about the red cell distribution width rdw before that i just like to explain so this is a peripheral smear so in this peripheral smear there are various rbcs of various sizes you can see that they are having the same shape but they are having different sizes so such Variation in size is called the anisocytosis. That is, in this smear, you can see that their shapes are varying. So, this type is called as poikilocytosis. Poikilocytosis. That means if there is variation in shape. The red cell distribution width is related to anisocytosis. That is, it is actually the coefficient of variation of red cell size. Red cell size. Or you can say, say that it is the degree of anisocytosis. Anisocytosis. So the normal RDW red cell distribution width is 11.5 to 14.5 percentage. So this red cell distribution width it is increased in iron deficiency anemia and it is almost normal in case of thalassemia. So this is very important because the microcytic hypochromic anemia that is a CETA. So iron deficiency anemia and thalassemia both are included. So the RDW it is one of the parameter which could differentiate the iron deficiency anemia and the thalassemia. So it is one of the parameter to differentiate the iron deficiency anemia and the thalassemia. So the stain used for the peripheral smear is the Romanowski stain. There are actually, in the Romanowski stain, there are Jemsa stain and Leishman stain. So these are the commonly used stain. So next I'm gonna, def uh, gonna explain this table. This is very important table which will help you to remember and various types of anemia from the peripheral smear finding so 
in one column i will be writing the peripheral smear finding and on the other column the conditions various uh, types of anemia which are seen the first two i have already discussed there is a microcytic type of anemia here the rbc will be smaller in size mcv is less than 80 femtoliter it is found in sita sideroblastic anemia iron deficiency anemia thalassemia and anemia of chronic disease whereas the second one is a macrocytic anemia where mcv is greater than 100 femtoliter the rbc will be larger in size it is uh, found in lhmc that is liver disease hypothyroidism megaloblastic anemia due to b12 or the folic acid deficiency and the, due to cytotoxic drugs so next one is the spherocyte here the cell will be small and there will be no central pallor normally the rbc is having one third central pallor there will be a central pallor so this is seen in hereditary spherocytosis then autoimmune hemolytic anemia this is actually the most common cause for the spherocyte then various blood transfusion reactions and it is also seen in burns so the next one is the pencil cells so in the pencil cells the rbc it will be like this the shape of rbc will be like this and this is found in iron deficiency anemia pencil cell is found in iron deficiency anemia the next one is the bite cells the rbc shape will be like this as if it, it as if it has been bitten it is found in g6pd deficiency so next is the bur cell or the echinocyte in the bur cell or echinocyte rbc will be like this so it will have small regular projections it has small regular projections and it is seen in conditions such as chronic renal failure and uremia so next condition is the spur cell or the acanthocyte here the rbc will be like this there will be sharp irregular projections the projections are sharp and irregular so this is seen in a beta lipoproteinemia so the next condition is called the schistocyte or helmet cells or the fragmented red cells so the rbc will appear like a helmet or it's like be a fragmented cell so it is seen in microangiopathic hemolytic anemia and prosthetic cardiac valve so next one is the sickle cell so when the rbcs are sickle shaped it will be of sickle cell due to sickle cell anemia so the next one is the target cells it will be looking like this as if a target a dot like so it is due to it can be seen in thalassemia it can also be seen in megaloblastic anemia and the liver disease so next is a tear drop cell otherwise called dacrocyte it will be looking as a like this that is like a tear drop it is found in myelofibrosis myelophthesis and myelodysplastic syndrome so next there are hovel jewel bodies so they will be like this so they are actually if this is rbc they will be like this hovel jewel bodies they are actually the remnants of dna and they are seen in the megaloblastic anemia asplenia thalassemia and even the post splenectomy patients hovel jewel bodies hovel jewel bodies are seen next is the hains bodies hains bodies it is actually the hemoglobin precipitate hemoglobin precipitate so if this is a rbc it can be seen like this it is found in g6pd deficiency 
Next is the Pappenheimer bodies. It is seen in sideroblastic anemia. The next one is the cabot ring. Cabot ring, it is a figure of 8 configuration and it is found by microtubule. Microtubule. It is seen in megaloblastic anemia, especially due to B12 deficiency. So the Rolex formation, that means the RBCs are arranged as a, like a piles of coin. That is the Rolex formation. It is seen in the multiple myeloma. Then we have the polychromatia, which is indicating the reticulocyte. It is uh, actually seen in the hemolytic anemia. Any kind of hemolytic anemia, there will be polychromatia. The last one is the basophilic stippling where this is the RBC and there will be numerous blue dots. So this is found in sideroblastic anemia or the lead poisoning and the thalassemia. So these are the various RBC morphology which I was talking about. So this is the variation in size. We have normal, microcyte, macrocyte, this is the oval, microcyte, oval macrocyte. And this is the hypochromic macrocyte. So when it is hypochromic, this is the grading of RBC based on the concentration. That is plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four. Then we have the polychromatia, which is seen in reticulocyte. So the shape shape variation are the target cells, spherocyte. This is the acanthocyte, and this is a bur cell. So acanthocytes are irregular sp spike. Whereas in bur cells, we can see regular projections. So this is a teardrop cell. This is a schistocyte. That is a fragmented cell. This is a helmet cell. So this is stomatocyte, which is having a slit-like pallor. And it is seen in hereditary stomatocytosis. Then we have the papenemer bodies, cabot ring, basophilic stippling, Havel-Jewell bodies. Then this is agglutination and this is a Rolex formation seen in multiple myeloma. So this will be helpful when understanding about various types of anemias. So that's all. Thank you.